If you have cirrhosis and you've experienced confusion, then you may have developed a serious complication of the disease, which we will discuss in this video. Hepatic encephalopathy is a complication of cirrhosis that causes confusion. When the liver is unable to clean the metabolic byproducts of the body, then these toxins accumulate and they cause the brain dysfunction. In essence, the liver is making the brain ill. Decreased attention is typical of hepatic encephalopathy and distinguishes it from the other ill effects of alcohol on the brain, such as acute intoxication or withdrawal that leads to an agitated delirium or long overuse of alcohol that can create a nonsensical speech called Wernicke's encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy is often accompanied by other forms of confusion. For example, a patient may have dementia simply because of older age, or they can have a separate acute encephalopathy. For example, an infection might be an insult to the liver, but it's also causing general illness that leads to the brain dysfunction. We call that septic encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy can come on rapidly. For example, if a person has overdosed on Tylenol, that ingestion can make the liver die in a matter of days and cause rapid deterioration in all body functions. But more often, hepatic encephalopathy creeps on slowly. Over the course of days or weeks, and family members start to notice that a patient is acting a little odd. Distinguishing these different types of confusion is best done by speaking with the patient and their family and hearing how they've progressed over the previous days. Hepatic encephalopathy characteristically starts with a reversal of the schedules. Person is up throughout most of the night and then sleeping all day long. And it's thought that that's because the toxins that begin to accumulate interfere with the normal day and night cycles of our brain. As hepatic encephalopathy worsens, patients will have difficulty completing tasks or following a conversation. They may forget where they are, which can lead to them getting lost. And that's an important reason that they should not drive because they will have slowed reaction times and they're more likely to get disoriented, forget where they were going. Eventually, they may not remember what year it is, be able to recall their name, and be difficult to keep awake. And this is why hepatic encephalopathy can become very dangerous and at its most severe is even a cause of death in people with cirrhosis. The clinical evaluation may be aided by a CT of the head, specifically to exclude a stroke as another reason for the patient's symptoms, but very often it's clinically obvious that the patient has hepatic encephalopathy. Labs are helpful to try to discern a cause, but there really is no one lab that reflects the severity of the patient's condition or seals the diagnosis. You'll often hear that a patient's ammonia level is elevated, but we don't know exactly what toxins trigger hepatic encephalopathy, so ammonia does not perfectly correlate with a patient's symptoms. There's many patients that I've seen who have very severe hepatic encephalopathy, and yet their ammonia level is relatively low, and there's those that I've seen who have a very high ammonia level, and yet they seem to be perfectly lucid. And so I don't really find ammonia to be that helpful. Aside from distinguishing these different types of confusion, it's very important that once we've decided that a patient has hepatic encephalopathy, that we determine why. Some of the reasons for why are relatively simple. The patient may have been getting too many diuretics, or they finally reduced their sodium levels in their diet. Now they've gotten over diuresis. As a result, they're dehydrated, or their potassium balance is off. These are easy to fix. What becomes very concerning is if their kidneys are starting to be injured as well. Because when your liver doesn't work, you really need your kidneys to be working at tip-top shape because you certainly don't want two organs failing. A very concerning reason to have your liver and your kidneys be in dysfunction is because of an infection. This is really important to understand. A patient with cirrhosis is for practical purposes immunosuppressed. And that is because the liver makes many of the proteins that are responsible for finding and killing bacteria before our lymphocytes or white blood cells are able to hone in on that bacteria. We call this the innate immune system. So the liver is really key to our body's ability to invite an infection. And that's why I say a patient with cirrhosis, liver failure, doesn't really have a normal functioning immune system. They are immunosuppressed. And that means that these patients will not present with infection in typical ways. They may not mount a fever, notice a lot of pain. Those can be really late findings. As a result, they can hide an infection and seem perfectly well. And the only sign that they're actually deteriorating and have an infection may be hepatic encephalopathy or a kidney injury. 
Another cause of hepatic encephalopathy to consider when a patient has it recurrently and it's really difficult to treat is that blood may be bypassing the liver altogether. We call this a shunt. And one of the common ones is from blood to flow from the spleen to the kidneys rather than its usual path from the spleen to the liver. And that blood that failed to flow through the liver can't be cleaned by the liver, which means more toxins accumulate. GI bleeds are another reason that patients with cirrhosis develop confusion. This is because when blood leaks from the upper GI, it overloads the body with proteins. We discuss an upper GI bleed called varices in a separate video, and in an upcoming video, we'll discuss the treatments for hepatic encephalopathy. Until then, thank you for watching and be safe.